Hi, I'm Marcia Franklin. Welcome back to this Dialogue Web Extra. We're talking about good summer reading, and with me are three guests. Carter Niemeyer, who has written a memoir called Wolfer, Alan Heathcock, who's written a book of short stories called Volt, and Laura Delaney, who is co-owner of the Rediscovered Bookshop in Boise. First of all, Laura, how is the book business right now? How's it doing? Well, I can tell you that there are a hundred more independent bookstores in the United States at this time now than there were a year ago. So the independent bookstore is starting to make a comeback for that small local bookshop. Interesting. Very interesting statistic. Well, uh, so people are reading, and I know mm -hmm. that I know this because we've gotten really good response on our Facebook page when we ask people for their book recommendations. And we'll start with one um, that has just gotten nothing but good reviews, which is Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrandt. And uh, Ted wrote in and recommended Unbroken. Have you read it? I have. It's been one of my staff picks since last. I read it in November. It was a sleeper. I had not World expect, War II? Yep. I did not expect to like it. There was so much hype. I was like, ah, I'm not going to like this book. And Good. I read it in about a day and a half. Ted says, it's the true story of a guy from California who ran in the Olympics in Berlin mm -hmm. and later served in the Pacific on a B-24 crew. After the plane goes down, they're adrift on a rubber raft and are attacked by sharks and enemy planes. Later, they're POWs who are treated brutally. A fascinating story and well told. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's almost unbelievable what this individual went through. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, book that is, uh, Tim Egan has been on this program talking about it, the author, The Worst Hard Time. I have read this book. It's excellent. It's about the Depression era. And have you, have you read either, any of you read it? Yeah. It's a great book, uh, The Worst Hard Time. I would highly recommend it. And mm -hmm. he's also been on Dialogue. Another book getting a lot of play, and it's going to be a movie coming out in just about a month and a half is The Help by Catherine Stockett. And I've read this as well. Have you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about the civil rights era, and it's uh, told uh, from the point of view of black uh, servants mm -hmm. in, the, in the South. And I thought it was very interesting, although it's somewhat controversial because um, it is written by a white woman. Did you like mm -hmm. it? I did like it, and there are many, many <coughs> book groups in the Boise Valley that are reading this book. We try to keep track of what people are reading, oh, yeah. and it's very, very popular. Yeah, it is constantly it's, there. It's, it's on hold at the library. It takes a long time to get it. Mm -hmm. so but it is in paperback now. It'll be interesting to see the film come out. Mm. I'm not always one that goes to see the films of books that I've read. How do you feel about that? You like films a lot. Do you go see I films do. of books? I, sometimes I have an image in my mind of what the character looks like, and I don't want that destroyed. Yeah, sometimes it's terrible. Sometimes it works out all right. Sometimes, occasionally, the movie's better than the book, but very, <laughs> very rarely. What about your short stories? Have any of them been optioned? Or? We're, we're working on it. There are movie people who are reading them right now, but the world moves very slowly <laughs> yes. in all it of these areas. It moves fast and then slow Yeah, it moves very slow then very fast. What so. do you glean from, from films? Because I know you've watched thousands of them and you keep a log of them. Yeah, other than, than stories, I, I constantly look at uh, certain scenes that have been done beautifully and, and dialogue and mannerisms of actors, anything that I can borrow that I think might help, images that I take. Um, so uh, I use it absolutely as a tool uh, every day in my writing. That's great. Well, let's talk about another recommendation from Paula, a book called Life on the Line by Greg Achatz, or Achatz. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. This sounds very interesting. She says it's a book about a chef who lost his sense of taste and continued to cook. Have any of you read mm. this one? Oh, I, I, I certainly imagine, have it, though. but it, it sounds really interesting. And um, yet another one, and, and by her own admission, she said, sure to be controversial. It's called Where's the Birth Certificate by Jerome Corsi. And we can guess what that's about. <laughs> it's about Barack Obama. Um, and I have not read this either. I did look it up to see. But, you know, there's a whole genre of books, is there not, that come, that spring up really quickly surrounding mm -hmm. current events. And um, it's amazing to me how quickly they get published and disseminated now. You know, almost, it seems like weeks after an event happened, there's a book out. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, you, you, I, yes it is, and it's a very, it's a big challenge to try to keep up on it and try to figure out which ones to bring in right. and which ones to, to leave as orders, and it is something we always have to try to keep up with. Now, you, we talked in the main program about how you self-published, and you mentioned also in the main program that you'd like to write another book. Do you think you'll go that same route the next time? Well, I think we self-published just to make sure we got the first book out. Uh, we're hoping maybe with some publicity on Wolfer that uh, 
maybe a publisher would be interested in us, and I wouldn't rule that out. Right, but you'd have to go under some different uh, restrictions probably than you had. Yes, and that, that uh, we might find uh, an issue. I don't know. It's kind of <laughs> nice to just write your book and, and put it out there the way you like to and, and not have anyone uh, criticize your technique and style. On the other hand, what benefit that a publisher can give you is like, you know, you've just come off a book tour that's been all arranged right. by a publisher. No, they're, my publisher, Grey Wolf Press, is uh, they're, they're way ahead of the curve on how they can get the word out about your book and what you're doing. And uh, certainly I couldn't have done it on my own the way it's been done. Um, another viewer has written in, Susan, and she's recommending a book that I'm reading actually called A Visit from the Goon Squad. And she says, uh, well, it did win the 2011 Pulitzer Prize for fiction. Uh, every chapter is told from a different character's point of view uh, to create one whole wonderful modern story starting and ending with the same two characters. Susan says, I loved it. I'm reading it now, and it's, it's engaging. One of the chapters was a little bit difficult for me. And I'll tell you what, I was, I'm reading it on an e-reader. And what's difficult for me sometimes with an e-reader is that I cannot, you know, with a book, if I forget, like, a character or something, I can go, okay, I think that person was described on the left-hand side of the right, page. Right. On, right, you know, I'm very visual. And with, it, with an e-reader, I got confused in one of her stories. And I'm having to page through it and try and find the place to mm -hmm. explain who Betty is or whatever. I feel like we should record that and put that <laughs> on uh, David Carr's book, The Shallows website. Right. Because that's a lot, one of the things he really brings up is that it is a physically different experience. I also read The Shallows that Al had, Al had recommended. Um, I think it's a brilliant book, um, but it is. The, the, it's the, it's the a physically different. The Squad or Shallows? No, reading The oh. Shallows is okay. the book that, that ties in with the, the e-reader Oh, about the piece. internet, yeah. Because um, it is a physically different experience. I think we've got a, a cover of that. The Shallows is a book about how the internet can affect your, your brain. And it was a finalist mm -hmm. for the Pulitzer Prize. Um, yes, it's a very different experience. I'm not going to say I would never, never, I mean, mm -hmm. there's a room for both. There's room like for if both, you, If yes. you go on vacation, it's nice to have one of these so you don't carry stacks of books. Now, let's talk about um, some recommendations that you made that we didn't get to. This author, Robert Dugoni, has, actually was born in Pocatello. Mm -hmm. He's written another book that we've talked about on this um, program called The Cyanide Canary about a case out of uh, Soda Springs, I believe. It, this one's called Murder One, though. Yeah, this is his... Uh, Uber detective David Sloan. He is the trial lawyer for civil cases. Um, Murder One is the book that seems to be the one that's going to break him out of the mold. This is genre fiction at its best, and you fall, you really start to care about this character. And of course, he is in yet another very challenging environment and has to wind his way through. Defending, defending a woman, a woman who he defeated in a previous trial, who is now accused of murder. Yes, this looked very interesting to me. And not that this is about murder, but a book recommended by Bjorn, one of our viewers, uh, called Wild at Heart by John Eldridge, uh, encourages men to become more um, in touch with their, I won't say savage side, but kind of dangerous side. And um, he really likes this book, and it also talks a lot about the importance of getting in the outdoors. Again, going back to not sitting in, at home and be, in his view, being passive receivers of information but going outside. And certainly the book that you recommend, The Loop by Nicholas Evans, talks and refers back to your own career. You are indeed a character in this book, and there's a lot about the outside in it because it's about wolves. Yeah, Nicholas Evans uh, has a real affection for Montana, so it's kind of built around the town of Augusta, Montana, and I'm, uh, I guess, referred to in there as uh, Trapper Bill Rimmer. And the book is about? It's about wolves and, and, and conflict uh, in the West with wolves and livestock and livestock owners and uh, the whole Western culture. And he gave an introduction to, he wrote an introduction to your book, which I thought was pretty hilarious. Well, he did. It was very helpful and uh, colorful. And uh, Many people know him as the author of The Horse Whisperer, right? Is yes, that was his first novel, yeah. and Loop and was his second it'll novel. It'll be interesting to see what he thinks of Buck, which is the movie coming out, the, the, the documentary about uh, Branneman. So it'll be interesting to find out what he thinks about it. But 
great getting an introduction from him on your on your book. And then uh, continuing in the Western theme, Far Bright Star by Robert Olmsted, who used to teach at Boise State University, as you do. That's right. I, I could say that he's responsible for me being here because I, I admired his work so much. I moved out here to study with him. But this book is... Uh, it's subjective in that I love this book, though I know this is one on my list that's not for everybody. The language is stunningly beautiful, uh, very intricate, and this is a brutal book about uh, this uh, cavalry troop that gets ambushed, and the entire book is basically this one uh, platoon trying to survive out in the uh, the borderlands of Mexico uh, while these cavalry men try to, try to find Pancho Villa. Oh, so set in the Mexican American. Yeah, that's war. right, Southwest, yeah. Okay, and he's teaching now where? It, he's in Ohio, Ohio, Ohio Wesleyan. Wesleyan. Right, yeah. great. Well, speaking of Idaho authors, I know, Laura, you wanted to um, mention a very popular book by an Idaho author. Brady Udall is now out in paperback. I've read mm -hmm. this as well. It's all, all 800, 700 pages or whatever. It's a real page turner. Great mm -hmm. book, The Lonely Polygamist. And this is a book that I've loved since I first saw the review copy that I got a while ago. My favorite part of this book actually is the character of Rusty. And when you read this book, you're going to have Rusty, someone you're going to carry with you for a long time. He yeah. is the middle child of middle children. I would be very surprised if this is not made into a movie as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I read it, I saw right. a film in my head. Right. Um, and uh, Betty wrote in and recommended books by authors that have been on dialogue and you both know them God's Dogs by Mitch Wieland awesome. and Memory Wall by mm -hmm. Anthony or Tony Dorr um, of Memory Wall she says how does one mind create such a richly satisfying variety of equally memorable innovative and exquisitely written short stories and by of God's Dogs she says an excellent yarn about relationships and personal truth with a strong Idaho sense of place um, certainly both these writers um, are in this tradition now of, of Idaho and Brady Udall and mm -hmm. Alan and you of you know Idaho really coming of age mm -hmm. I think with 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 the, the tension Absolutely. on its Absolutely, I think mm -hmm. you throw you know those three up there at the end there with Brady, Mitch and Tony and look what their mm -hmm. books have done out in the world and all the talk that they've gotten mm -hmm. amazing things are happening uh, around here I'm very proud of all three of them and, and, and also up north amazing. too we have to say and Kim, Kim Barnes, Barnes has been on this program several yeah, times absolutely. Daniel Orozco is doing Excellent work um, over we in eastern a, Idaho as well. Yeah. And we have another author coming out. Kelly Jones has a new book coming out this fall that's about uh, art history and uh, the Nazi Germany and the degenerate art. The so. wife of former Attorney General Jim Jones. People mm -hmm. will remember and you him. mentioned Daniel Orozco's book, yeah. Orientation's the name of it, and I've been traveling around the country and hearing so many people say great things about it, but I just love his, it's short stories, but I just love his work too. I hope to have him on to talk about that, and uh, we'll end with, on a light note here, or a lighter note, um, a book called The Actor and the Housewife, recommended by Cassandra, and um, this is a book about uh, a woman who meets uh, one of her, uh, she really admires the she actor. She admi admires the actor and has it, uh, a relationship, a letter writing relationship. This is one of Wally's at the bookstore's favorite books. I've read Shannon Hale's young adult books because she's also got a number of. Oh, yes, uh, she does. Of including a uh, Newbery Award winning or Newbery Honor book called Princess Academy. And, and um, it, it's interesting when you see um, writers cross over like that from young adult to adult books. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the book that you recommended on the show earlier, Matched, which is a young mm -hmm. adult book, the woman traditionally has written has LDS, written a, yes. or uh, religious. Religious books, but right. this is, that is not what this book right, is about. Right, but I mean, she's able to kind of morph between mm -hmm. young adult and adult, and that's fascinating to me. I don't think I'd be able to do it. <laughs> well, in sum, has this experience been uh, a good one for you? Anything I could do to help people read. I love to read and sharing the passion of the written word with other people is a, an excellent way to spend an evening. And for you, Carter? Well, my lesson I learned was if you're going to be a writer, you've got to turn into a reader first. So <laughs> I've had to do more reading than I used to do. Well, I like what you said in one interview that I read. Alan, you said um, it's, you know, ultimately writing, you're by yourself in the end. And you said you really have to be brave enough to take yourself seriously.
And that's the believe truth. Believe in yourself. And that's one of the hardest things to do. It's a brave thing to sit down and say, I'm going to write a book, and I'm going to sit by myself, and I'm going to get it out. And you have to get over that hump of taking yourself serious enough to say that I have something worthwhile to say, and I'm going to put the hours in this chair and, and get it done. Great. Well, thank you both for doing thank that you. because I enjoyed both your books thoroughly. Always enjoy having you on, Laura, to talk about what's new, and best of luck in your business. Thank you. You've been watching a Dialogue Web Extra on Good Summer Reading. I'm Marcia Franklin. Thanks for tuning in.